Hello everyone, myself Shruti. I'm working as an assistant professor at Maharaja Institute of Technology, Mysore. And today I'm here to give you some information about the module 2 in the green building subject. As we have discussed about the module 1, now I am directly jumping towards module 2 in the green buildings that is the environmental friendly and cost effective technologies. So in this particular module, I am just giving you some information regarding the most environmental friendly technologies and the cost effective technologies which is very much necessary in the present situation. Now, in this particular module, there are various contents that are to be studied in which the first and the foremost content which is required to be studied is about the different substitute for wall construction. As we all know, the construction of buildings plays a major role in the developing country. However, what is the requirement for considering or using a different substitute for wall construction. So as we all know with the growing construction we are going to use a lot of natural resources and along with that during the manufacturing of various materials which are required for the construction of a building it results in the liberation of large amount of carbon dioxide emissions which are causing lot of negative effects to the environment. So in order to avoid this negative effects and to implement this environmental friendly technologies we are thinking of going towards or moving towards a different substitutes for wall construction. That means instead of using our regular conventional materials for the construction, we are thinking of using a different technologies which are either environmental friendly as well as cost effective. So what all are the cost effective and environmental friendly technologies which are considered. The next topic we are going to consider here in this particular module is ferro cement and ferro concrete construction. So what is this ferro cement and ferro concrete construction? A ferro cement is a type of material in which the cement mortar along with a steel wire mesh is used for the construction. So instead of using our regular conventional mild steel or HYST bars, we are thinking of using the wire mesh for the construction along with the mortar is nothing but a ferro cement construction. Next comes the ferro concrete construction even here. But here along with the wire mesh we are thinking of using concrete as the materials. It means the wire mesh, the steel wire mesh along with the cement concrete is nothing but ferro concrete construction. So when we come to this particular topic we will be discussing in detail about this type of construction. Next after this the third topic we are going to learn in this particular module is about the different precast members. So the third topic is the precast members about different precast members. First of all, what is this precast members? So the precast members are those concrete members especially which are manufactured in the factories in the controlled manner to obtain or to maintain its standard dimensions and tolerance. Okay, this is what the precast members is. What all are the precast varieties? What all are the different precast members we are studying here? The major precast members we are studying here is the precast beams, the precast walls, precast columns, precast doors and windows and even precast water tanks and along with that we will be even learning about the precast septic tanks here. Okay. So the next topic here we will be learning in this particular module is about the 
alternative roofing systems so the next topic is the alternative roofing system in which we are going to consider the alternative systems that is the filler slabs and the composite beams and the panel roofs as an alternatives for our regular conventional roofing system okay the next topic here we are considering is the pre engineering the pre engineered building elements so in this particular topic we are going to study about the pre engineered building elements so first of all what is this pre engineered building elements so those elements which are manufactured at the factories and assembled at the sites we call it as pre engineered elements here in this particular topic we will be learning about the components of the building elements in detail the contribution of agency it is nirviti kendra cost fund and habitat so in this particular topic we are going to consider the contribution of various agencies in order to enhance the information about the environmental friendly and cost effective technologies across the world so there are certain set of agencies it can be nirmiti kendra or cost fund or habitat they have set their own agencies in order to implement these technologies okay now after knowing the brief contents involved in this particular module let us study this particular topic in detail that is the different substitutes for wall construction now when we think of wall construction the first and the foremost thing we get into our mind is the masonry construction first of all what is this masonry how do you define masonry is defined as the assemblage masonry units which are bonded together by a mortar this is how we define the masonry as that means it is defined as the assemblage of masonry units which are bonded together by a mortar so what is this mortar as we all know mortar is just a mixture of cement fine aggregate and water so here the picture shows the assemblage of the masonry units along with the mortar now after this when we go in detail with this masonry structures here we need to know about certain definitions which are to be learned in this particular masonry structures if you observe this figure we have mentioned various terms in this particular figure to start with the first one which is called as parpents if you observe parpents in this particular figure these are the vertical layers of mortar between two bricks so this parpent as it is shown in the figure it is a straight line which shows the adhesion of two bricks 
in the alternate layers in the same line. Okay, these are nothing but perpend. So the next term here which you need to learn is about the queen closer. So here the queen closer is, it is a brick which is of normal length and thickness but is of half the width of the normal width. It is majorly used for uh, the masonry structure in each course in order to complete the bond. Okay, usually this queen closures are usually provided in order to complete a course. So what is this course I am speaking about? Each layer of a masonry structure is what called as the course. So here after learning about the queen closure, we need to know two important words or two important terms here that means they are stretcher codes and header codes. Now if you assume this as a brick, so when you consider this as a brick, when the bricks are laid along its length we call it as a stretcher face and when it is laid along its width we call it as a header face. Now when all the bricks are laid in the stretcher face in a particular course we call it as stretcher course that means in a course. That means in a brick layer, if all the bricks are laid along its length or along its stretcher face, we call it as a stretcher course. If all the bricks are laid along its width, that means along its header face, then we call it as a header course. Okay, that is the difference between the stretcher course and the header course. And in this particular figure, when we go with the next term, that is Kion. So this new word kion is also a brick but here this brick is cut lengthwise into two halves and is especially used at the corners in the brick walls. So these are called as queen close. So if these are laid in the header course we call it as queen header. If this is placed in the, if this queen is placed in the stretcher course, we call it as a queen stretcher. Okay. I think now we are in a position to know the definition of these terms which are represented in the figure. Right. Now, after knowing about the basic terms, next we shall learn about the bond in masonry. So what is this bond and why is it necessary? So the bond in either brick masonry or stone masonry is nothing but the arrangement of bricks. So the arrangement of bricks or the arrangement of this masonry unit should be such that these vertical joint of this masonry unit should not come in the same line. That is how this bricks or the masonry units has to be placed in the masonry structures to create a good bond between this units. So this bond helps the structure to carry the load and to distribute among the all units. As the figure shows the distribution of load upon the wall which is being distributed to all the units in the particular structure. This is what the bond is. So when we consider or when we think of bond in a structure, we have varieties of bond in construction out of which we will be learning about major four kinds of bond. That means 
The first one is stretcher bond. header bond english bond and finally flemish bond now let's study about the first kind of a bond that is stretcher bond so the stretcher bond is a type of a bond in which all the bricks are laid along its stretcher face that means they are laid along its length then that means in its stretcher face so they are called as stretcher bond so here the figure shows the arrangement of bricks in the stretcher face that means showing or representing the stretcher bond next is the header bond so it is a kind of a bond in which all the bricks in each course are laid along its header that means all the bricks are laid along its width that means they are laid along its header face thereby here the figure shows the arrangement of bricks in the header bond next type of a bond is an english bond so this is the most common type of bond which is regularly used and they are considered to be the strongest type of a bond which has been used for almost all the type of construction especially this english bond can be considered for walls of any thickness and even for mass construction we go with this english bond when we speak so much about this english bond how is the arrangement of bricks here in the stretcher bond all the bricks were along its stretcher face in the header bond all the bricks were laid along its header face but in case of an english bond the bricks are laid both in stretcher and header that means here the alternate layers of the masonry structures will have a stretcher face and header face as the figure represents in english bond it consists of alternate layers of stretchers and headers along with that we have even learnt about one more concept that is the queen closes that means the bricks which are considered here to break the vertical joints are placed at either the starting or end of the course now after english bond that means which consists the alternate layers of headers and stretchers the next type of bond is flemish bond so how do we consider the bond in flemish bond so how do we consider the arrangement of bricks in the flemish bond in flemish bond each course will have alternate layers of stretcher and header now if you consider this as a brick in a particular course you will have stretcher face header face stretcher face and header face which is the same for all the separate courses now in this case also in order to break those vertical joints coming along the same line we are going to use this queen closes here also now in this flemish bond we have two different types of flemish bond that is single flemish bond and double flemish bond so what is the difference between this single flemish bond and double flemish bond now when we consider the single flemish bond even here each course and each course consists of stretcher face header face stretcher face header face but here in case of flemish bond we will be learning about or we will be considering two faces that is 
the front face and the backing face of a structure. Now, when we consider uh, the front face, so in single Flemish bond, the front face will be the Flemish bond, but backing face will be English bond. That means when you look at the arrangement of bricks from the front, it will be as Flemish bond. When you look it from the back side, it will be representing the English bond. That means the single Flemish bond takes the appearance of the Flemish bond and strength of the English bond here. That is the difference in single Flemish bond. When you compare the same thing with the double Flemish bond, but in double Flemish bond, both the front face as well as the back face will be the Flemish bond. That means the arrangement of the bricks will be such that both front face as well as the back face will represent the Flemish bond itself. Now, in order to get this arrangement, we need to study about the arrangement of bricks in single Flemish bond and double Flemish bond separately. Now, let us see the arrangement of bricks in a single Flemish bond wherein we are going to discuss about one brick wall and one and a half brick thick wall arrangement. Now, when you look at the figure in the single Flemish bond, we have one and a half brick thick wall arrangement and two brick thick walls arrangement. In both the cases, if you observe, the first two figures at the top represents the odd cores of one and a half brick thick wall and the even cores in one and a half brick thick wall. Now, as we know about this queen closers here, now if you observe the first figure at the top, that is one third and fifth course, that is the odd course, the queen closers are placed along its length horizontally. When you look at the same queen closer in the second, fourth and sixth course, that is the even course, they are placed vertically. That is depending upon the required requirement, we are going to place the queen closer either vertically or horizontally. Now, in this particular figures, if you observe along with the queen closers, you are also observing one more term called as bat, B-A-T bat. That is the brick bat. This bat is a brick which is cut along or across its width. Resulting piece is called as a bat. So, in order to get that arrangement of the Flemish bond in the front face and the English bond in the back face, we are going to use this bat. So, if you observe in the odd course, we have used 3 fourth brick bat and in the even course, we have used half brick bat depending upon the requirement. So, this is about the single Flemish bond for one and a half brick thick wall. The same thing, if you observe the Flemish bond, especially if you observe the single Flemish bond for two brick thick wall. That means the thickness of the wall is the length of the two bricks. So, if you observe here, the front face of the wall is the Flemish bond and the back face is the English bond. And here, depending upon the requirement, we have used half brick bat along with the queen closers laid vertically and horizontally in odd course and the even course. So, after discussing about the single Flemish bond, next we shall discuss in detail about double Flemish bond. Now, as the figure shows the double Flemish bond and uh, we know that in the double Flemish bond, both the front face as well as the back face represents or is resembling the Flemish bond itself. Thereby, it gives a good appearance when compared to the single Flemish bond or the English bond. Okay. Now, when you take up 
when you consider this figure in the double Flemish bond, now if you observe here also, you will come across one and a half brick thick wall and one brick thick wall images. So in the first image, if you consider, we have considered one brick thick wall in which an odd course and the even course are considered. And in the odd course, the queen closes are placed vertically, but in the even course, they are placed horizontally. And below this is the plan of the bricks arrangement for one brick thick wall. Next comes one and a half brick thick wall. Even here, the arrangements are made such that both the faces are Flemish. In order to obtain that arrangement, the queen closes are placed both in the odd course as well as the even course. So here we have learned about some of the bonds which we are going to regularly use in the masonry structures. After this, next we shall go for the next type of bond which is called as rat trap bond. So what is this rat trap bond? So after learning about the four different types of the regular bonds that is Fetcher, Header, English bond and the Flemish bond. The next type of bond which we are learning here is the rat trap bond. As the figure shows, here we have a rat trap bond in which in this particular bond the arrangement are made in such a way that the bricks are laid in its vertical position creating cavities in the walls. However, this rat trap bond was first introduced by Laurie Baker in Kerala at 1970s and this type of bond was extensively used because of its lower construction cost and reduced material usage and it is highly thermally efficient. Okay. Now, when we think of this rat trap bond, the number of bricks and mortar required is very less in the rat trap bond because as you are seeing in the figure, we have a cavities available in the middle, in the center of the wall, thereby the bricks and the mortar required in that particular hollow space is completely negligible. Thereby, it reduces the overall number of bricks and the mortar required for construction. And the next point here is this particular type of bond can be considered as a green building technology which is considered as the environmental friendly and, and cost effective technology thereby it is moving towards a sustainable construction. Now when we think about the cavities available in this particular structures this cavities helps in providing thermal comforts in a particular structure. That means it comforts the people who are staying in a particular building. Thereby, they help in altering the environmental temperature due to this cavities available around the structure. So, these are some of the key points in the rat trap bond. So after learning about this particular type of bond, as we all know, every structure or every work has some advantages and disadvantages. Now let us learn about some of the advantages of rat trap bond. As we have discussed, the first and the foremost advantage we can consider here is, it, has where it, is, it requires very less number of bricks nor the mortar that means the material requirement is very less thereby since the material required is very less the overall cost of construction is less and when you compare the overall cost about 30 percent of the cost reduction can be observed in this rat trap bond. Now when you think of the thermal efficiency to up to what level we can observe thermal efficiency in this rat trap bond. And the next advantage is we can and the next important advantage here is since the cavities are present at the in the since the cavities are present the overall bricks required is very less 
so when you think of the number of bricks required so so when you compare the conventional structure if a conventional wall construction requires about 550 number of bricks this particular rat trap bond may require only 570 570 470 only 570 bricks for its construction since the number of bricks required are less the load on the particular structure is also less thereby the dead load of the structure or the dead load of the wall will be reduced that is the one more added advantage of this rat trap bond one more thing is when you think about the appearance since the bricks are laid vertically and uh, the positioning of a brick itself gives you the pleasing appearance the amount you invest for plastering and painting can also be reduced in this rat trap bond okay these are some of the important advantages of rat trap bond when we speak about advantages there are also some disadvantages of which we have to think about the the most observed disadvantages in this rat trap bond is its construction it requires a lot of attention during its construction and positioning of the bricks in case of this rat trap bond and when it comes with the maintenance since cavities are present at the middle of the stub walls since cavities are available regular maintenance is very much necessary if not considered they may have negative effects on the structure itself next since the arrangements or the bonds which are created by this rat trap bond is not as of a regular english bond or flemish bond here the labors required may be only skilled labors that means a large number of or more number of skilled labors may be required for the construction of this rat trap bond so these are some of the observed disadvantages of this rat trap bond in the next class we will be learning about some more substitutes for wall construction in which we will be learning about the arches okay thank you